Welcome to 101. I'm Greg Bassett, your host from the Salisbury Independent Newspaper. We've got Molly Hillegas with us today. She's the Executive Director for Habitat for Humanity, one of the great, great, great organizations in our community. Welcome, Molly. Thanks, Greg, for having me. Three years in charge of this thing, and you're really running with it. We're having a great time. You just had a big milestone here like three weeks ago, four weeks ago with a house. Like a number 200? What was the number? We, um, we just sold our 65th, 65th. house. And we had a dedication yesterday okay. on um, 605 East Isabella. We have another one this Saturday. And we're going to sell three more houses in the next two months. Wow. That's we're really, getting it done. That's, I was going to say, you're getting it done. <laughs> and you've sort of become the expert in town on this stuff. Now, the city people turn to you for, like, what's going on with these properties and what, you know, what makes sense. And it's just really, you have a really important role in what goes on. Well, we are, I, th I look at the city as a partner because they, you know, they're trying to eliminate blight. We're trying to help low-income families, and we can really work together to serve more families together. So I'm right. excited. There was a, in a recent meeting, uh, which triggered me thinking you needed to come on again, um, there was a property that's been in trouble for years, and they owe the, I think the property owner owes $70,000 in back taxes, just walked away from the property. Um, but you've had your eye on that property for a while, and you had sort of had a vision for what could happen with it with, a, with an adjoining property. I think that property is actually a vacant piece of land. Okay, right. And the grass, you had a grass. And the grass, yeah. and just over the years, all right. these fines and stuff that have just accumulated. But um, in the area of Church Street where we're focused, the lot sizes are very small. Right. And if we want to appeal to a young family, they need a place to park their cars. And in the Church Street neighborhood, there's not a whole lot of parking. Right. So if that... Um, you know, if the city could take that property in receivership and then donate it to us, then we have a larger footprint to, to build a, a better home for a low-income family. But what I loved is they were sort of scratching their heads about what to do with the property, and you had a plan for it. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I mean, you just... offer them a solution, and they were like, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I hope it works out. But, um, and that was interesting. I hadn't really thought about the parking issue in, in that part of town. There is no parking. There's no parking. Yeah. And when you have two income households, which half of our new partner families, they're married. Right. You know, I mean, a mom and a dad and kids. I mean, it's like, it's tremendous and I'm so excited. I mean, we, we love helping the single moms and the single dads. Right. But, um, but when you have two income households, even though they're low income, they need two cars. Right. Because public transportation just... Isn't, it exists, but it's difficult. It's difficult in this area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so take me to the beginning. How does Habitat work? What does it do? We build and rehab homes and then sell them at 0% interest to families that qualify. They have to be in that 30 to 60% of the area median income, mm -hmm. which for, your, for the viewers out there, if, if you're making, or someone you know is making at least twelve fifty an hour full time, um, and they would qualify for a Habitat home. If they make less than that, then they don't make enough to be a homeowner. And is there a cap? Like, there is, and it depends on the number of people in the household. So if you go to our website, whitecomicohabitat.org, right. <laughs> um, you'll see that grid, and it's all based on the household size. Gotcha. So if I, if I want to do this, I, I go to you, and you guys find me a house, or we build one together, or how does that work? So you would, um, you would come to us and apply, and then um, we pull credit, we check your income, you, uh, you agree that you understand our program that you're going to be putting in sweat equity instead of making a down payment. Right. You go to classes, home, home buyer education and financial education classes. And, um, and then, you know, we have, a, we have 16 properties to choose from. Um, they are buildable in order by which we have grants and, and what have you. So they usually get one or two choices. And... Um, so basically you have like 16 on the list right now that you're going to start on. 16 that we 16 lots that we own. I see, okay. Lots or houses. Right. Cuz some we do we do have some houses we're going to rehab. Right. And it's I think it's helped that you guys have come in town because previously they were on the west side uh, on vacant property. Mm -hmm. But now there's a it's help, helping to restore the the interior of Salisbury. Yes, we're really focused on the Church Street neighborhood at this time. We've dipped a little into the Doverdale. Right. Yeah, and Doverdale is going to be the next sort of crisis zone, I guess, in terms of housing. Um, it, it could. And then the Princeton Homes neighborhood, there's a lot of talk about that. Um, you know, Prince Street, that area, mm -hmm. what's going to happen with those homes is they're starting to deteriorate, too. It's true. Yeah. It's so there's going to be a lot of work for you guys. Yeah, I don't think we're ever going to have... <laughs> um, there's, there's so much need. I mean, 35% of Wicomico County right now 
falls into the Alice category, right? Which is um, asset limited, income constrained, employed. Excellent. See, I can never remember all that in a row. The working poor, right? Um, and they really have it. They really struggle to make ends meet. You know, which which bill are they going to pay? You know, am I going to buy food or am I going to buy the prescription? You know, for little Johnny that has a cold this you know this month. Right. Um, those the choices they have to make are pretty tough. Yeah, we had Pam Gregory on talking about that from the United Way, and it's stunning uh, the numbers. It actually, it actually matches what I see um, in terms of people, um, but it's just really a frustrating number that that everyone is living on the edge all the time. I see it every day. Yeah. What goes on in the Church Street neighborhood? You're in there. You're involved. Um, it's an area that a lot of people don't get to go into. What What do you see happening there? Well, I mean, crime is down. I mean, we've been working in the area for 11 years now, and it's um, it when the city did their analysis on the neighborhoods that they want to target, uh, the Church Street neighborhood was down on the list, which right. is great. I mean, it just speaks to the the work we're doing. Right, and the church there, they give out food stuff. It seems like a there's a kind of a harmony the thing that goes on there. There's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of synergies. Emmanuel Wesleyan Church has yeah. their Adopt a Block. Um, so they're serving that community. We've added a roof and repair aspect to our program, and so now we've um, we have a dedicated person, Laurie Williams, and she's focused on just helping aging homeowners that need repairs to their house. So we're we've already we already have 80 applicants. Wow! Since January. Wow, that's great. It's it's enormous. And there's been a lot of houses had siding put on them, and just that that minor thing really makes the neighborhood look a lot better. It does. It does. And the low-income folks, they can't afford, you know, or they may not, you know, if, 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 they're, if the spouse has passed on or is, is, you know, too old, you know, to repaint a home is, is expensive and takes a certain skill. Right. Um, your last dedication uh, we had on the front page, it was, I love these dedications because the people that are there are so emotional and they're so appreciative and it's just a real positive thing. It is. It is. Do and you cry at those things too? I, I do. I brought my I brought my tissues today because I didn't know what you were going to ask me. So I was like, uh oh. <laughs> but um, it, it's it's terrific to to be a part of that. And 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 I spend so many months. Usually it takes about an, a a year and a half. Right. Of working with that family before the house is completed. So you really get to know these folks. Um, and it. It makes the tough days so worth it. Right. There's probably some ups and downs in that relationship as you go along. Sometimes. Yeah. I mean, sometimes. I mean, the, the coolest thing is when they come to me and they say, Molly, you know, I have an opportunity to get a promotion, um, but I don't want to mess up, you know, this, the loan approval. Right. And usually I'm, I say, well, tell me more about it. And... Um, I'm usually like, you better take it, or, right. I, or I'm going to be really mad at you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Go right. for that promotion. Now, how is what you do different from Salisbury Neighborhood Housing? Um, they do some things we don't do. So the home buyer education counseling, we actually partner with them, and all of our partner families go to them for that counseling piece. Um, they also do some credit repair, where I do. We do some. We do one-on-one. -on -one credit counseling um, when they're going through the process of applying. Right. And if they don't qualify because they're in, they're, either their income or their credit is too low, I'll give them one-on-one -on -one counseling, but I always send, try to send them over to Salisbury Neighborhood Housing so they can get more in-depth budget counseling right. and, and those types of things that we don't um, have the resources to do. Gotcha. But they also offer down payment assistance and closing cost assistance that we don't offer. Um, their credit score requirements are higher than ours, so you only need a 550 credit score to be a homeowner with us. Um, I think their credit score, don't quote me on it, but I think it's 620. So it's a little easier to qualify with us. I, I saw a report that um, credit scores here are up, and I'm gonna write about it at some point, um, that we actually have a very low uh, debt as a community, uh, we our residents don't have as much debt as they do in other communities. Uh, so it seemed like a positive thing. Um, there may be some unreported debt that I don't. I'm not sure. Like all the buy here, pay here. Right. Those don't show up on credit reports. Right. So that may be something to look into. 
but um, I do see most of our partner families have paid their car off or they paid cash for it up front. So right. that's not, that's actually a good thing for us because um, their incomes are so low. If they did have a car payment, they may not, their debt to income ratios might not make them Right, qualify. they wouldn't qualify. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, the cornerstone of what you all do is the volunteerism where people help out. How does that, how does that work? Well, um, if anyone that's watching just, you know, a single person wants to volunteer, then go to our website, uh, wicomicohabitat.org, and click on the volunteer button, and then it takes you directly to our, um, our signup.com portal, which they can pick the days that they want to sign up. You can also access it through the United Way, Get Connected. Right. And um, we have, right now we're looking for five, about five people a day on, when, on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Uh, if a company wants to donate, you know, wants to have a, a, a day of service, uh, we can expand that to maybe 10 people at this time. Right. And that's the great thing. It's a team building exercise for companies. Mm -hmm. So it's really, it's really good for employers to get involved in this and, and get their employees out there. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's yeah. great. It's, it's great. a fun way to meet people, too. Definitely. <laughs> and we have some great, great events coming up, too, where you can meet people. So what are they? We have Habitat for the Holidays quarter auction this year. So instead of just doing a luncheon, we're doing a quarter auction. Okay. It'll be November 30th at the Moose Lodge. Okay. And um, those quarter auctions are complicated. I've never. They're not. They're so easy. I've never you quite. To, I went to you one. You haven't it, been. It went on forever, and I couldn't figure <laughs> out what was going on. Well, maybe you weren't putting enough quarters in. <laughs> So we'll have like 80 prizes and you just, you know, you buy your paddle when you first walk in and, or you can buy in advance and then you have your quarters. There's items there that you're bidding on basically. And then you put your paddle up and then the, the guy, which will be Jim Phillips, Jim, you're the guy. From Habitat Restore. Yes, yeah. our restore manager. He'll be calling out the numbers, the paddle numbers. And if the, he calls your number, then you win the item that's. Pretty it's still easy. confusing to me. So easy. <laughs> There's so much going on. It goes on forever. When they call your number, you win. It's not. <laughs> but it goes like for hours, doesn't it? I mean. It's a, there's, a, there's an intermission. Is there? you know, we have a chance for food and vendors. And it's November 30th at the Moose. November 30th at the Moose. Is it a Saturday? Um, no, it's a Thursday. Okay. Um, we don't want to interfere with any of the Right, other... right in the middle of the holiday time there. Right. Yeah. It's going to be great. And then someone, his, I wonder if he wants me to say his name. Um, just donated a Harley Davidson. Wow. A 2009 Harley Davidson Sportster. It only has 320 miles on it. Wow. So we are restoring it. There wasn't a whole lot to do to it, but um, we're going to be raffling that off. So we'll be, look for at that event. No, we're going oh, to we're going to separate gonna thing. Separate. We're going to raffle. Okay. We're going to sell tickets f there for it, but we're going to raffle it off at our Chefs for Habitat which is March 3rd. Right, that's in March. Mm -hmm. and, and that event, you kind of retooled a little bit this year, didn't you? Because I, I heard like way more people were there and it was more fun than ever. It was really, well, we had a, we were in a bigger location. Okay. We were at the Rain Event Center and that's, um, it's just gonna hold more people. So we're gonna have the Harley in there and can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> we're hoping to sell like 2,000 of those raffle tickets. Right. And um, somebody will, you know, be the big winner. So what are your all's financial needs? Um, how, do, how do people donate to you? We have the, um, we, we, we can take any kind of checks, cash, <laughs> right. credit cards. They can come to the ReStore and buy merchandise. That all goes back into our building projects. Right, explain the ReStore to me. So the ReStore is our thrift store. Anyone that is looking to make uh, repairs to their house and they're, maybe they're getting a new kitchen, let's say, for example, um, if they're careful or the contractor's careful about removing the old cabinets, they could donate those cabinets to us and then another family is going to buy those in the restore mm -hmm. and then use those. So last year we had, I think it was 32,000 transactions. Wow. It was crazy. We, um, we had a net profit of a, a little over 100,000 that's going straight into construction projects. You can get a great deal, super, de super deals, doors, windows. Uh, we just had all these Anderson windows with the crank, right. the crank windows. I mean, the wood interior, right. those were all, tons of them donated. Wow. Now, I, I read every now and then that Home Depot or Lowe's will donate, but contractors also do? Contractors, or? homeowners, um, like the old Delaware, uh, Delaware Lumber right. building. Um, 
that whole warehouse is being cleaned out. Right. Pretty much everything's getting donated to the restore. We have so much siding right now, tons of brand new siding in boxes. So we just need people to come and buy it. Well, I need to go out there and check that out because I have asbestos um, shingles and. You want to cover it up? Uh, maybe. I don't know. I hear it's uh, difficult to do, though. Like, you really should remove the shingles and not just cover it up. I've heard that you should just cover it up. Okay. <laughs> well, because if you have to remove it, then you have to then dispose there's, there's of an, it. Yeah, yeah, there's an and issue. And you have to have yeah. the, all the right, the right person has to have, be certified to remove asbestos shingles. Right. That's one of the things I've learned at Habitat is that um, construction projects, depending on the age of the house, they can get pretty technical. Right. And um, yeah, asbestos is something you just don't want to mess around with. Are there too many rules? The landlords in our community complain about too many building codes, too many, too many rules. Do you feel like there's too many rules? I think that the rules are out there to protect the tenants, and they're there for they're there for a reason. Right. And when you see some of the conditions, you know, when we we when someone applies to be a homeowner and we go and do a home visit, we see the conditions. And um, so I think I think the rules are necessary. Where is the restore? It's at 908 West Isabella, uh, which right is across from Johnson's Weed Seed. In, yep. Um, nice building there. We are expanding our hours. Yay. <laughs> we have just installed these ginormous fans. Um, they would be the fans that you would see in the, like the Piedmont Airlines warehouse um, where they fix the airplanes. Oh, yeah, okay, great. They're huge. It's made a humongous difference. And so we will be open starting in September, Tuesday through Saturday at 10 a.m. Wow, that's going to be mm -hmm. great. It is, and we're going to have, um, well, Jim doesn't know it yet, unless he's watching. <laughs> he's about to know it. <laughs> we're going to have Customer Appreciation Tuesdays, and we have this giant spin and win wheel that makes a lot of noise, which he, he doesn't <laughs> like the noise. <laughs> it's going to be great. So anyone that comes on Tuesday is going to get an extra discount, as we really need to get the word out about being open on Tuesdays. That's what's so cool about Habitat, is you guys make everything fun. We're going to be giving away Habitat swag and discounts. Now you're it's wearing, fun. You're wearing the shirt for the I'm wearing, Women Build This week, is the Women Build. Which um, is really fun for me. It's in the spring every year, right? It is. Today we had, uh, we, we were part of the Salisbury University Survival. They're all out there. I mean, every, thousands of people out there today. They're all moving in. Yeah. And so that was this big fair. And we were, you know, trying to recruit new members for the, cha the campus chapter. And um, so I dressed the part. Right. Now the women's build. When is that? That's the first. That's the week leading up to Mother's Day. Right. And last this well this year we had 200 women sign up. We got a lot done. Yeah, and it's it's amazing. And I, I just I love the photos that come from that because there's these women you know with the construction gear on, just working their butts off. We were able to gut two houses. One is already completed. Like we gutted it. They gutted it and started re drywalling it. Um, that was a house we sold July 17th. So wow. we were able to turn that around. We couldn't have done it without all those uh, amazing women. Yeah. So that the volunteer aspect is really cool. Mm -hmm. You should That's have great. something like that for men. We have Friday guys. <laughs> you could come be a Friday See, guy. See, now what is this? I don't know about this. You could be a Friday guy. On um, Thursdays and Fridays, we have this, this um, group of um, retired guys that just, you know, want to give back. And, in fact, one of our um, volunteers is going to be getting a, um, a governor's award this year for his years, his wow. hours of service. He's been donating, I think it runs anywhere, uh, around 500 hours a year in volunteerism, which is amazing. That's Gary Martin. Thanks, okay. Gary. Yeah, well, let me know so I can put that in the paper when the time comes. Yeah, you know, that would be really cool. Um, how successful is all this? Do, you, do people kind of come through, they, they do their end of the bargain? Well, you figure um, in 30 years, so this, this year marked our 30th year, um, we've only had three foreclosures. Wow. Out of those 65 houses. And half of our homeowners have already paid their house off. Wow. That's a huge success. Huge. We're starting to track, of those homeowners, how many had anyone in their home then go on to college or get an additional certification? How much money did they, were they making when they bought the house? How much money are they making now? Is their life better? And that's, that's where we're at right now, is to try to quantify that. Right. And based on what I know, it just it is. It, I mean, it's, it transforms lives. Yeah. It really, it's, it's, it's great. And I think there used to maybe be a stigma, but I don't see a stigma anymore because it's such a thrifty way to do it, if that makes sense. 
We had, and, we had 150 applications last year of people wanting to be homeowners. That's unbelievable. We right. have six families approved right now that are waiting. So the more money that can get donated, the faster we can you know, rehab houses and build new houses. Right now I have, I have the um, Community Investment Tax Credit Program. So for donors that, can, that have the ability to donate 500 or more, um, they could get a Maryland tax credit. So half of whatever they donate would be a Maryland tax credit. We had one donor last year, he sold his business and the real estate that went with it. Um, had a windfall capital gain. He came to, he called me and he said, do you have any tax credits left? He donated $15,000. Wow. I mean, that's tremendous. If I could just get the word out about that. Right. Yeah, I don't know that people know to turn to people you for don't, something like that. And yeah. they, don't, they don't realize, um, so that $15,000 donation really didn't, it, the, the net cost after his charitable deduction on his IRS federal return and then the Maryland tax credit, I mean, it was, I mean, it was so worth it. Yeah. I don't know if it's true. People tell me that um, Habitat started strong in the community and it sort of slowed down for a while. There was like a leadership crisis for a couple of years and then it was kind of flat. But since you've, you're here, it, there's a lot of energy back in the organization. Thank you. Um, I can't speak for the previous, but But I mean, do you, you. do you feel the energy? Because people tell me it's there. It's fun. I mean, we're having a good time. Like to me, my, my personal motto is build more houses, have more fun. Right. And when people feel that, you know, that energy and they, they want to be a part of it. Right. Um, city right now is going through an examination of its historic district guidelines. So in the, the four different areas of the town. Um, and certainly North Camden is one of those areas where part of it is always been considered historic. But now there's wonder if really some of those houses are historic or not. Um, and you guys have been sort of involved in that. You want to talk about that a little bit? Well, I went to the meeting, and that was it was interesting. It's, there's a, um, a homeowner in that area that wants to donate the house to us, and um, it makes me a little nervous because I don't I know how much it costs to um, make repairs to a historic a, ho a house right. that's an historic and district, and that makes me very nervous. My favorite show ever is the um, um, with Hillary and David uh, on Home, Home House Garden TV. Uh, oh, what's it called? Oh. Uh, love, love it or list it. Yes. What my favorite part is when they go in there with the contractors and they try to figure out how much things are going to cost to repair. You know, they have a budget, and then they find problems all the time. You know, I love mm -hmm. that um, and how they deal with the problems. How much is that's going to cost? So there's a formula to it, but really there's a lot of guesswork and a lot of intuition that you have to apply in terms of how much it's going to cost to rehab. That's, that's what yes. I see. Right, right. And, and, then, and you have that in your head now. Well, I'm still learning. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, there's always curveballs that get thrown yeah. at you. And the codes that were, you know, when, these, when some of these older homes were built, you know, the codes weren't the same as they are now. Um, I mean, we were like the house on on Martin Street that we were that we gutted, and we we're um, we were just taking one piece of wall out just because it the air conditioner unit was dripping and it you know right needed to be replaced. And we we realized the entire home, every exterior wall was not insulated. So that means we had to gut that house. Right. And um, luckily, it was during Women Build Week, so we had. You know, lots of hands to, to help us do that, but then you get into all that cost. Those are the surprises that you just don't know until you get into the into the project. We find termites and water damage and mm -hmm. copper pipes or lead pipes, I guess lead pipes. Right, the pipes that are um, have corroded, that are like in between, like under, in the ground. Yeah. But not quite to the city, so it becomes the homeowner's responsibility. Right. That's really expensive. And um, we try to look at all of that because when we sell a house to a partner family, we know they're not gonna have the money you know, to dig up all that and replace it. So right. we, we have to But a house that on. in the historic district, that would be tough for you to tackle because you'd have to, the expense of maintaining that historic charm, I guess. Yeah, we're not gonna do that. Right. <laughs> No, in fact, if someone wants to... You couldn't to, use the Anderson windows I, and, that, and that kind of thing. I, I don't, we just don't have the, um, we just, we just, just not part of our... Right. 
It's not in, within our mission. So if they, if they ratchet it back a little bit and... So if someone donated a, wanted to donate a house in the historic district to us, I right. would turn around and sell it. Okay. As is. Right. Because I... We just were not going to invest. We want to put things that are energy efficient. Right. You know, at low maintenance, you know. I would totally want to put vinyl siding on it because the homeowners that we serve, they, they can't even afford a power washer. Right. You know, let alone, you know, use oil-based paint and repaint a house. But so. if, they, if they do maybe soften some of the historic rules, you know, on some of the houses, that would help you guys because you could actually repair those houses. Right. If they said that that wasn't part of the historic, then we could, you know, slap some vinyl siding on right. there. <laughs> you know, and change out the windows to right. energy efficient and it would be you know, more affordable. I mean, a brand new window is, two, one brand new window is $250. Right. A vinyl one. Right. I don't know what a, a, a wood one would cost because that's not our thing, but I'm sure it's more. There was a garden over on East Church Street. Were you guys involved in the garden? I seem to think maybe we have you two some... gardens okay. over there right now. Right. We're about to disassemble them because that's we're, we're building two you houses, have houses there. on them. Okay, mm -hmm. and we'll move those gardens to Grace Street. We have five lots over on Grace Street. Now, where did you get the idea to put a garden in? Habitat International. I mean, they just when I started, I just you know, took as, all the information I could get my hands on and said, how can we serve more families? Right. And so one garden serves forty people in the wow. neighborhood. And so the biggest challenge with the garden in Church Street is that. Because there's so many no trespassing signs around, um, people were afraid, you know, that they would get in trouble if they picked the tomato. But that's what it's there for. That's what it's there for. <laughs> so. Yeah, and Martin Hutchison's done so much positive with the gardens mm -hmm. around town. There's a whole vibe now about the gardens. Mm -hmm. Right, and with the gardens, um, the other the other challenge that we've had is that we really need a group that would be focused on maintaining them and right. all that because that's. Um, you know, we're, we're you know, we, we have small staff. You, you mentioned Habitat International. Um, when you go to these things and you talk about your problems, I remember going to the corporate newspaper meetings and I would be with, you know, 80 editors who had all the same problems that I had. It was just wonderful to be in a room with people who knew what my life was like. Um, and I guess it's the same sort of thing with you. Um, how do we stack up with these other Habitat groups? Are we That's a good a one? That's a really good question. Um, well, all I can do is look at our past performance. So when I, t when I took over, we were building about one house a year. So in this last fiscal year, we finished and sold three. This fiscal year, which just started, we will sell five, maybe six. So I'm really just looking at our area and how I can do better than the last year and serve more families. Right. And it seems like politically we have a, a strong mayor who wants mm -hmm. to redeveloped town, I guess that's probably an asset. Absolutely, and it, to me it feels like different agencies are working together more. Right. I mean, like the Telemond group, they are, I mean, they are totally helping us with the Haitian population and um, doing all the home buyer education classes and financial education in French Creole. Wow. Because there's no, um, I mean, that's just what they specialize in. It's perfect right. for us. Right. That is a big help. Mm -hmm. All right. If you want to send you money, how can they reach you? Um, they can mail us a check or they can bring one by <laughs> to the office or the restore. Uh, they can donate online through our website, wycomicohabitat.org. Do you get um, money from United Way? We do. Okay, and so we, they can do it. They can check the check you on the United Way box. Well, um, they can, but. Um, there's so many other agencies, you know, we're one of 35 agencies right. receiving funding, so um, I think if they just send, you know, if they do the payroll deduction, that's terrific, then it's easier on accounting for them, right. <laughs> too. <laughs> right. And the volunteering is fun. That's on the website, too. Volunteering. They can come to our events. Um, they can donate cars, motorcycles, boats, <laughs> um, any, you know, really anything. And the restore is getting new hours. That's exciting. The restore is going to expand. Um, we're giving away the, the motorcycle, Harley Davidson. Don't forget. Buy your raffle ticket. All right. And your other thing is November 30th. The quarter auction is November 30th. Right. Yes. Habitat for the holidays. Kick off the holidays. She's Molly Hillegos. We're thrilled to have her here. She's really and her associates making a difference in our community. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Greg.
I'm Greg Bassett from the Salisbury Independent Newspaper, another edition of 101 right here on Pack 14.